Oh. The, the point is this, the point is this, you're just interpreting a verse to suit your narrative because your understanding of a messiah has been warped so by who, the Trinitarian who, concept of a messiah. Who, Alfred Edersheim, in his book, The Life and Times of Jesus, the Messiah, <clears throat> page 188. It's like Rabbi Kaufman Kohler, when you read those rabbis that lived like in the 1800s and stuff, they say things like authentic Judaism or synagogue Judaism. They mean Second Temple Judaism by it. So he says the synagogue or Second Temple Judaism taught the doctrine of the divine personality of the Messiah as held by the Christian church. On the other hand, he says the cumulative evidence when one studies this stuff like we have second. And the bad thing about Alfred Edersheim, you can get a, a lesson just from reading the notes at the bottom of his pages, always giving a Talmudic explanations for the uh, Ju Judaic background of the Gospels, right? But he lived and died. He was born the same year as Abraham Lincoln, and he died, I think, in 1889 or something. So just about 50, 60 years short of the Dead Sea Scrolls being found. I would love to have read his works with him utilizing the Dead Sea Scrolls. So he says the cumulative evidence that one finds when you study Second Temple Judaic writings, he says it must leave on the mind at least this conviction that the Messiah expected was far above the conditions of the most exalted of God's servants, even his angels. In short, so closely bordering on the divine that it was almost impossible to distinguish him therefrom. Did you catch that? I think so. Can you repeat that one more time, please? Let me read it again. He says, the cumulative evidence must leave on the mind at least this conviction. In other words, if you study the Jewish interpretations from the Targums and the pseudepigraphical writings, the interpretations of the Jews during Second Temple Judaic times, the evidence should just leave you with this one conviction, that the Messiah who was expected was far above the conditions of the most exalted of God's servants, even his angels. In short, so closely ordering on the divine that it was almost impossible to distinguish him therefrom. Alfred Edersheim is basically saying that if you studied messianic prophecy, and you studied the interpretations of the Jews on those prophecies, it's hard to distinguish this messianic figure from God himself. Yes, sir. In such circumstances, it only needed the personal conviction that he, the Messiah, who taught and wrought as none other, was really the Messiah, to kindle at his word into the adoring confession that he was indeed the son of the living God. And once that point was reached, the mind, looking back through the teaching of the synagogue, would with increasing clearness perceive that however ill understood in the past this had been all along the sum of the whole old testament that's beautiful jesus it is